Welcome, everybody. It's a Saturday. We don't normally do it on Saturday, but tomorrow is Sam's birthday. Sam is our little baby boy who's 19. So <laughs> we need the love on Sam. So we've Me always too. wanted our kids to know in ministry life that they're really important to us because, mm. you know, I traveled for 15 years. So whenever I'm with the kids, I try to make it just fun and be present with them because you guys all know it all has to happen at home, doesn't it? With the family lamb. And uh, we don't put pressure on them to be mystics or anything. We're just letting them journey it out. All we're doing is releasing a lot of love bombs on them, a lot of grace. And we're trusting Yahweh that he is the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Tav, and that we can trust him with our children and our grandchildren, that all of them will be taught by the Lord. We're just releasing them to discover how that looks for them. And um, it's beautiful because they've often been around, haven't they, Rach, when they, the supernaturals yeah. happened? Absolutely. And they're always hearing supernatural stories. And what I try to do, this is how I mentor them, is by when we're walking or something, I'll just throw in a little story. <laughs> and you just feed them these stories and it becomes yeah. a foundation in their life that the God of wonders. Mm-hmm. So a cool thing happened in the town. Um, there's, a, there's a road here and there's a, there's a barrier to protect the pavement, the sidewalk, where people are walking from, cars. Now, somebody crashed into it a long time ago. I don't know when. I walked past it the other day. I put my hand on it, and I said, Lord, I want to be able to govern time. I want to make all things new, even crash barriers. I put my hand on it. No one was there. It was late at night. I was engaging time miracles. Next time we walked past there, the whole thing had been fixed. They'd fixed the whole thing. (laughs) So I don't know whether God sent a bunch of angels. We didn't see any people do it. Um, but the whole thing is, is, is being fixed and made new. Now, that week I had four things happen like that. I walked past this area in our town where people dump garbage. And I just walked past it and said, Lord, I want this cleaned up. I kid you not. A couple of days later, I walked past it. There's a guy with three massive bags cleaned up the whole thing. So we don't realize how powerful we are. We just have to imagine bigger. You know, we have to think bigger. So, like, I know we're used to. I was in a a church meeting the other day because we went to see a baptism and they were talking about the Holy Spirit coming on you and you speaking in tongues. I think we've made it too small. We don't just want to speak in tongues. We want to do time miracles, youth miracles. We want to live in energy. We want to have expanded IQ. See, we have to start to restore the wow and the wonder to the gospel. It's not just a salvation message. And I know it's hard for us because we're used to the church we've been in, but it really has to change because it says arise and shine. So there has to be so much energy that we shine. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) There has to be so much energy that you actually glow, arise and shine. And I know it's tricky because we made the box so small. We have to smash the box. Mm -hmm. But as you guys know, people in history have already done it. This isn't a new theology. This is the history of the saints, the history of the church, and the history of Paul. Actually, the beyond human message is Paul's message. It's Paul's gospel. And I'm called Justin Paul Abraham. And I didn't used to keep that name Paul in the middle. I was just, I'd be Justin Abraham. But on one of our travels, we went to see Laura and Larry Randolph. Do you guys know them? The Randolphs? Amazing prophetic couple. Anyway, we we were hanging out for three days and just loving on uh, those guys and having fun. And as we were about to leave, uh, Larry prophesied over me. I just sat in front of him and he said, God's going to give me the Paul and bring out the Paul. He didn't know my name was Paul, by the way, but he said my name was Paul. And he started to give me a mandate for Paul's gospel. And this is what this is all is, is, is Paul's gospel. Come on. (laughs) So Yahweh, thank you for Paul and the realm of Paul, the house of Paul and what he walked in. And we honor him right now. Honor your father and mothers that it might go well with you. I thank you for the realm of life that he carries. And carries now. I thank you for what he understands in the cloud of witnesses. He understands the gospel even more. The Coco happy gospel. And many have prophesied that Paul will start to mentor this generation. And many have prophesied that John the beloved will mentor this generation. Will we say yes, Lord? 
Yes. In the same way we, we have earthly teachers, we want heavenly teachers. In the same way that you use Bill Johnson or Patricia King or other people to speak into our lives, we say yes to the saints speaking into our lives, appearing in dreams, appearing in visions, appearing in the kitchen, appear in the bedroom. We say yes to heavenly teachers. We say yes to the ecclesia in heaven and on earth as one body. We say yes to the lineage of light. We say yes to the kingdom realm of the Father. Wow. Woo, 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 woo. Woo. We are heavenly. We are heavenly. We are heavenly. We are joined. We are one. We are one. You might even want to speak that out right now. We are one. They are one with us and we are one with them. We are one family. We're family. Mm -hmm. We're, we are family. We are family. We are family. You are my family. You might even want to speak that out in the spirit now. You are my family. That's what it says in Ephesians. We are one family in heaven and on earth. You are my family. We are family. We are one. We are one. We are one. It's very powerful. Even speak it out and sense it that we are one. We are one. We are one. Breathe. Just take a deep breath. Beautiful. Thank you, Yahweh, for the saints made perfect. <laughs> They've been made perfect. Isn't that amazing? Even your family that's in heaven, some of them had issues. They've been made perfect. So we can have a relationship with them in perfection now. We can have a relationship with them in union with Yeshua because we are one family. All distance has been cancelled at the cross. We bled into one. We are one body. Thank you, Yahweh. Okay. Thank you, Yahweh. So, Yahweh, we thank you that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit lives in this body. This body, Isaiah says, would, will be glorious. So put your hand on your body now. I invite you to do this. You don't have to. Yahweh, I ask now for energy and life and light to flood the organs of our body, restoring, renewing, healing. That our body is priceless and our body will be flooded with light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be health. Let there be joy. Thank you, Yahweh, for energy. Now healing, clearing, eyesight, hearing. Arteries, organs, muscles, reversing heart disease, reversing macular degeneration, reversing aging, length of days and health of days. With strong life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. He will restore your strength like that of a wild ox. Health, may you be healthy. May you be happy. May you live in ease. May you be safe. May you be well. May you be happy. May you live in ease. Whoa, Yahweh. Yahweh. Wow, 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 wow. So, 
Do you remember last month I said about the wow song, about writing a wow song, that there's a verse in the mirror translation where it says, you have discovered yourselves to be located in Christ. So last month I released the now wow challenge. You guys hear me release the challenge. Well, I phoned Godfrey Bertel. How many of you guys know Godfrey Bertel? Godfrey Bertel, amazing grace singer songwriter yeah i phoned godfrey and i told him about the now wow challenge and i gave him the verse he got back to me and he got a song straight away, straight away. and he yeah. wrote a song straight away and he loved it so what i want to do guys i want to play godfrey's song it's on youtube it's it's the demo version but it, this is beautiful there's there's a bit at the end where it goes wow 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 which yeah. i love and I can't wait. He's coming to play in our conference in September. And I can't wait to dance to this song. So here we go. Let's do the wow song. Here we go. You have discovered yourself to be located in Christ. What seemed so distant is now so near. It's in him that we are one At peace with everyone He made division disappear But now, wow But now, wow But now, wow But now Wow! Everything's changed, everything's changed, everything's changed, everything. Everything's changed, everything's changed, everything's changed, everything. We have discovered ourselves in this glorious life. We've unveiled faces, we've seen the What do you think, Rach? I love it. I love We're it. Have a good time partying to that, aren't we? I, the wow! Oh my bit. gosh! Wow, 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 I can't wow. wait till September. But now, wow! So people can listen to that on YouTube, can't they? You said yes, it's on. YouTube, it's on yeah? YouTube, and thank you for other people that have sent wow songs as well. I didn't have yeah. copies of those, but we <laughs> we've had other people send wow songs in. But I guys, I want more wow songs. So <laughs> can we, I'm going to genres. All genres. I'm going to put it out there again in the spirit right now. For if you've never written a song, here's your chance. You can write a wow song. And uh, <laughs> now. now, wow, everything's changed because we have to change the songs, guys. We have to change the frequency of that we're releasing to the gospel. We have to start to believe that Jesus actually did something. <laughs> and that we're innocent and included. Mm -hmm. So we're doing our first conference in like two or three years in September. If you guys have never come to Wales and you want to party with Godfrey and me and Liz Wright's going to be speaking 
and Janine's going to be doing some ascension worship. There'll be meditation. There'll be lots of frolicking and joy. There will be costumes. We have a costume department. If you need costumes, we really do. So we our party, have a, party coordinator. Yes, we actually, we, we believe every conference needs a party coordinator because yeah. we're a new creation, you know, conference. Which means, heaven. Yeah, so we want to look like heaven and sound like heaven. So since September, I'll be putting out a flyer soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so September, maybe you guys want to fly to Wales and party and hang out in the bar eating food. It'll be a lot of fun. Anyway. Oh man, I'm so whack now. How am I supposed to speak on anything now? <laughs> it's always happens, babes. It's a habit. Yes. Um, it's a good habit. So I know maybe people want to have a little break right now and have a cup of tea or coffee, but I'm going to talk about Paul for half an hour. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so the apostle Paul, Thank you for the Apostle Paul. So we're talking about in India where you don't need food. And we were talking about not needing sleep. Paul manifested these probably more than anyone in the New Testament. I want you to think about his life for a minute. Paul got so energized and whacked by the gospel. He said this, and you don't hear this preached in Sunday church, but I'm going to share this verse again. And you guys know it well. If we are out of our minds or out of where we're standing, most translations say, but the word is ecstasy, which means ecstasy. If we are out of our minds, this is Paul talking. So Paul was out of his mind, or a fool, as some may say, in divine ecstasy is for God. The mirror translation says he delights in the ecstasy. So who's the ecstasy for? Paul said it's for God. So it's God's fault and it's for God. See, God wants you. He's the most high. <laughs> and he wants you high too. You know, Isaiah saw him high and lifted up. <laughs> so <laughs> I saw the Lord and he was high and lifted up and, the, and he filled the place with smoke. What can I say? You know, the Lord is full of joy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's some glory on that smoke, guys. You can't tell me that that smoke isn't going to get you whacked. I'm telling you now. I saw the Lord and he was high. Okay, so Paul knew this. And Paul said, if we're out of our minds and a blissful divine ecstasy is for God, but if we're in our right mind, it's for your benefit. Why? He says in the next line, for God, Christ's love fuels our passion and motivates us. He said this, the love which Christ has for me leaves me no choice. I'm choiceless because he loves me so much. So he said, I, I'm possessed by love. And why was he possessed by love? In the next line, it says, because, oh, my gosh, you guys ready for this? I'm going to drop a bomb now. This is so powerful. Why was he possessed by love? He says this, we are absolutely convinced that he has given his life for all of us. This means all died with him. Guys, that's why he was so whacked, because he didn't see punishment in the gospel. He saw the inclusion of the entire human race. Romans is all about this. He talked about one, one all of us fell in Adam. All of us were included in Christ. All died in Adam. All died in Christ. All will be raised in Christ. And he saw humanity. And he was one of them, because you have to remember, Paul was a murderer killing Christians when Jesus appeared as a ball of light. Jesus appeared as a ball of light. And what did Jesus say? He said, why are you kicking against the goads? The old translations say, what does that mean? He says, why are you fighting the, the, the cattle prod? Why are you pushing against me? Because I love you. I love you. So he broke in on Paul. Did Paul choose Jesus? No, this is why Paul kept saying he chose us in himself before the foundation of the world. He chose us in him before the foundation. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. And this hope of all of them finding out that in him they live, in him they move, in him they have their being, made him crazy and he'd have ecstasies and he was so full of energy. 
that he was an unstoppable force on the earth. He was going without sleep because he was building, making tents. He wasn't asking for money. He was making tents at night, preaching all day. And he could preach all night long. We know one story from Paul's life where he preached all night, where it says in the voice translation, Paul kept on talking. Paul kept on talking. And then this poor lad moves towards the window for some fresh air because Paul kept on talking. Paul kept on talking. And then he fell out the window and died. What does Paul do? Paul is so full of energy and life. He raises him from the dead. Does Paul stop the meeting at that point and say, hey, guys, maybe we should stop? No. It says he goes back upstairs and preaches until dawn and then goes to the next place to preach. There's a realm coming, guys, which I've seen Nancy Cohen operate in it. You know, you guys know this story. Nancy Cohen flew to China, not knowing anybody there. God said, fly to China. She used up her spare money to fly to China. This was before China was really open. She sat in the airport for two hours thinking, I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake. What am I doing in this airport? <laughs> <laughs> So she's the only white American person in the airport, right, sitting there. And a guy comes up to her and says, excuse me, are you a Christian? And she's like, yeah. Are you Nancy Cohen? And they said, we've been expecting you. This was amazing. They took Nancy Cohen to a cave and all these Christians were in a cave, hundreds and hundreds of Christians. I think she said a thousand or something in a cave. And she preached to them. For five days and five nights without stopping for one drink, a meal, she didn't sit down, she didn't sleep, and she spoke to these crowds of people. And as one group left, another would come and others would fall asleep and be awake. And she did that for five days. So, you know, Nancy's a very good friend of mine. I said, Nancy, you know, after you preached for five days and five nights continually for 24 hours a day, did they take you to a nice hotel? <laughs> I was thinking, where's the pumpkin pie in this story? I don't probably want to go there. There's no pumpkin pie in China. Anyway, so I asked Nancy about this. I said, Nancy, you know, after you preached for five days and five nights continually, did they take you to a nice hotel and look after you? She said, no, I had to walk 25 miles to preach at the next place. <laughs> <laughs> so I love Nancy. You know, I've seen Nancy. She gets the bubble up. So she carries the frequency of the gospel. How, you know, she believes in the restoration of all things. That's what motivates her to go to all of these different nations, work all these years into her 70s, because she's seen it, guys. You've got to see what Paul believed. You've got to see the scandalous inclusion of our species it says, when I am raised up, I will draw all men to myself. There's no like he's the all in all and he's becoming the all in all. And he's included all of humanity in himself without our permission. It says he made the covenant with himself because there was no one else who could keep covenants with him. So it says he made a covenant in himself and the Trinity set their mind and focus on us. And it says 2 Timothy 1, 9, I think it is. It says this grace was given us in Christ before the foundation of the world. So this grace that we're operating in was given in Christ before the foundation of the world. This grace was given us, and who kept talking like this? Paul. Paul must have been the craziest guy in his generation. Paul was speaking things that were absolutely scandalous. And you know what? He was leaking life everywhere he went. Even when people touched his, him, the clothing would have life. See, we've got to look at the fruit, guys. The fruit of people like Nancy, the fruit of people, wow, like Paul the Apostle, is this radical, explosive, leaking life, becoming a life-giving spirit, getting wisdom from above. I mean, Paul lived from different realms. He said, we're seated in Christ. He said, relocate yourself mentally. We're above. We're in Jesus. We're in Christ, in God. When he appears, you appear because you're one with him. So he's the guy who uses this word in Christ over and over again, in Christ, for in Christ, you're a new creation, in Christ. And we are the people that are in Christ. And we have to stop 
wow, preach in the way we have, where we separate from God all the time. And I'm, and I'm going to go after this because the thing that is robbing us of energy is we are focusing on sin, separation and death rather than Jesus came that you might have life. Not salvation, but life beyond measure till it overflows salvation is the gate remember it says your gates are called salvation so salvation is where you 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 realize what he believes and you receive his spirit and you receive union with him and you join yourself with the lord now you're a new creation so it's time for us to fight for life it's time for us to fight for for the nations to be glorious. I'm not looking for an awesome meeting. I'm looking for an awesome universe, an awesome planet. I want this to be planet joy. You know, shaka waka waka. Anyway, I hope I'm not offending people right now because I can feel how offensive the gospel is. This is why Paul called it a scandal. He said it's scandalous. Yeah. It's he said it's actually a scandal. Have you heard the good news? Have you heard the good news? Have you heard the good news? Do you believe what he believes about you? That he's included you, chosen you, and loves him in your, you in the Trinity. Mm-hmm. Wow! Whoa! So this this revelation of Paul's. Listen to what Paul said. His blood reveals your redeemed innocence and authentic genesis. As Ephesians two thirteen in the mirror, his blood reveals your redeemed innocence. And authentic Genesis. Wow. Clement of Alexandria said this in 150 AD. The son of God became man so that we might become God. So God's done something in us that's united us with the Trinity to form the four faces, the dance with the Trinity. Their life is now our life. They, their glory is now your glory. Their, their world is now your world. That's the new creation. So this is what Paul says in in the Amplified in Romans 6. Listen to this. This is so good. Oh, my gosh. Oh, (laughs) this one. This one's a strong chug, right? We're going to there's some whack on this next verse. Are you guys ready to be slapped in the face with Romans 6 verse 5? Because it's coming at you. It's coming at you like a train. Here we go. Here we go in the Amplified. Oh, it's amplified. Or if we've become one with him, permanently united in the likeness of his death, woo, we shall also certainly be one with him and share fully, share fully, share fully in the <laughs> likeness of his resurrection. So, wow. guys, we have to stop wow. preaching just. Ah! we have to stop preaching this watered down gospel we have to preach the full monty glorious paul gospel that we get to share fully fully say fully fully we get to share fully in his resurrected life we get sharesies we get sharesies. Do you say sharesies in America? In Britain, they say sharesies when you're sharing it. Jesus has shared his life. <laughs> oh, we get to share fully in all that he has. We have sharesies. It's sharesy time, people. It's not a double portion. Oh, prophets who keep bringing a double portion. Oh, Jesus is giving you a double portion. I don't want a double portion. I want the spirit without measure. All that he is, all that he has, the sacred dance. I'm not having a tiny microwaved version of Jesus, a little sausage. I'm having the full lamb feast. You go to a conference, it's like, what's the word for this year? Jesus. What's the word for next year? Jesus. Jesus is the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end, and he's one with you. It's too late. And that's why these guys blew up the world. They blew up the world because they weren't waiting for 2022 and two, 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 and two, 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 two. How many twos do you need before you believe? How many, how many New Year's Eve conferences do we need before we believe what Jesus has done for us is outrageous? And he's come. He's in me. He's in you. He's in us. He's everywhere. 
wow. So, you know, I know we love our New Year's conferences, but and I'm, if you want to go to one, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm telling you what, 2023 can't define me. 2024 can't define me. I stand fully identified in the new creation. In the new creation. Renewed in knowledge to the pattern of the exact image of our creator. This is the gospel that gives you energy. This is the gospel that makes you crazy. This is the gospel that gives you ecstasies. This is the gospel that makes you dance and crazy with joy. This is the gospel that we're innocent. We're included. We're in oneness. And his life is now your life. Whoa. Wow. So listen to the Phillips translation of Romans. It says, just as he was raised from the dead by that splendid revelation of the father's power, so too we may live, rise to live on a new plane altogether. Did you hear that, guys? We live on a new plane altogether. Now, that sounds really new agey. A new plane. But we are in a new plane. We're in a new place, a new home, a new location. So this is Paul. I'm using Paul's words. Listen to this. Romans 8.30 in the Amplified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and a condition or state of being. Guys, you've been raised. Oh, you've been raised and given a heavenly dignity. You've been dignified by the gospel. You've been dignified. You have a dignity. You've been dignified by the gospel. You've been raised to a new plane. You're new age. You are new age. You're next age. You're kingdom age. You're from another world, another realm, another dimension. So Paul said this, your old life has disappeared and everything has become fresh and new. The past is finished and gone. Everything is fresh and new. But now, wow. But now, wow. But now, wow, 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 wow. wow. But now, wow, 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 wow. Wow, 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 but now, wow, 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 yeah, yay, freedom, freedom from religion, freedom from the, whoa, oh, I was in the car today and we tried to put on some Christian music as we went for a walk, we had to drive 20 minutes in the car, every song I put on, it was misery, it was like a can of misery, would you like a can of misery? No, I'm, the songs were so miserable. Who stole our joy? Who stole the happy, happy gospel? It's the happy gospel, not the miserable gospel. I don't know. Maybe it sells records being miserable, but I don't want to be miserable. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why Paul had energy. See, I'm talking about energy. Why don't we have energy? Because our songs are miserable. Our messages are miserable. We're talking about sin all the time. We're talking about death all the time. We need deliverance from the church because it's speaking. Ooh, it's, it's, you know, you know what I'm saying, guys? Yeah. So Paul said, the grace of God worked powerfully within me as energy. He said, God's grace. I don't work, he said. I'm not even working. He says, God's grace works in me. So you have like people, you know, in church, they go, oh, you've got to watch out. There's this new thing called mega grace or hyper grace. Do you know the word hyper or megas is in scripture? It said great grace was upon them all. Mega grace, hyper grace was upon them all. Megas is the word. Mega, mega, mega grace was upon them all. And daily were they being added to. And great miracles were happening. Great signs were happening. The problem in the church isn't that isn't the hyper grace movement. The problem is the lack of grace. <laughs> I hope I'm not losing friends over this call because I'm I can feel how scandalous it is and I can feel how much it's triggering even me. I'm triggering me. Wow. But the problem isn't hyper grace, the problem is no grace, judgmentalism, religionists, superiority when Jesus is including and bringing the world to himself. And he's saying, Don't call unclean 
what I have called clean. I mean, Paul was so saturated by this message. He said this scandalous line. I'm going to say it now. It's very offensive. He said, I can no longer see anyone in a human fashion. I can't see anyone. He said, I can't recognize anyone because he saw the scandal. And that's what Patrick, St. Patrick, who transformed Ireland, he saw it. He said, Christ behind me, Christ above me, Christ below me, Christ inside of me, Christ inside of you, Christ inside of your voice, Christ inside of your eyes. They saw the entanglement that Jesus is in the trees. Jesus is in the sunlight. Jesus is in the air that I breathe. We live in the burning layers of love. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. But now, wow, everything has changed. Everything has changed. So we're coming back to the wow, 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 wow. Woo. How are we doing, Rach? Are you still with me, Rachel? I'm here, babes. It's we live awesome. in the burning layers of love. Woo. We live in the burning layers wow. of love. We live, you live, you live, <laughs> you live in the burning layers of love. We live in the world that's God saturated. The whole earth is full of the glory. <laughs> that's why Paul said, I'm whacked. He even went to the Athenians and they weren't Christians. And he said, the unknown God that you worship, I'm going to tell you who he is. And guess what? In him, you live. In him, you move. In him, you have your being. Or as your poets rightly say, are we not all sons of God? Are we not his offspring? Mm-hmm. That's the message Paul was preaching, and he changed the world. It took down Rome. What's happened to us? What's happened to us? Where we've, wow, so, yeah. Wow. (laughs) So Paul said this in Romans 8, 11. Once the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives within you. So when we accept that realm and we open up to that realm and his spirit lives in you, he will, by that same spirit, bring to your whole being new strength and vitality. So listen to a quote. I'm not going to go on much longer. We're going to land it in a second. Listen to a quote by my lovely friend, Nancy Cohen. I love her voice. Oh, man, I told you guys this before, but I once said to Nancy, I said, how often are you in heaven? And she smiled at me. She says, honey, I'm always in heaven. (laughs) You know, if you go up into heaven, you'll find Nancy there. She's there all the time. She never leaves. That's the new creation. Oh, whoa. I'm looking, guys, in all seriousness, I'm looking for the day that we walk into prophetic conferences and they say we're in, we're ascended and we're moving from there. The the age of the prophets laid a foundation for something more where we are all there. We are functioning there. We are manifesting there. Okay. So Nancy said this. And imagine her beautiful voice when I'm saying it, you know, instead of my Welsh accent. Honey, imagine that sweet American creamy beauty, right? She says, in all the times I've been traveling in the nations, I have never, ever had jet lag. Wow. How many of you guys just think that's amazing already? Traveling all around the world for decades and never having jet lag. Now, when you travel millions of miles, to say you've never had jet lag is totally amazing. In fact, on my trip over here to New Zealand, it took me from the time I left my house to get to their house was 64 hours. And in that 64 hours, I got one hour sleep. But when I got off the plane, I was so excited to see everybody so full of energy. It didn't bother me that I hadn't had any sleep. And I've been in places in the caves of China where I actually preached five solid days without sitting down, without taking a break, without ever taking a nap or stopping for dinner or having a glass of water without going to the bathroom. (laughs) How is that even possible? It's not humanly possible. The way it has become possible, I've begun to get the breakthrough to set my spirit in control of my soul and my body. That's amazing. So we can live in the spirit. We can function in the spirit and break off human limitations and break off the, the ideas of death and separation and tiredness and fatigue. Wow. 
all things are possible to those who believe. Believe. All things are possible for those who believe. Inside of us is a believer. Jesus is inside of us. And Jesus believes. So Paul, how did Paul live? He said, I don't live in my own faith. He said, I live in the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he said, I don't even live in my faith. I'm, I've given up my faith. I am now living in the faith of God. Thank you, Lord. We just engage with that right now. Guys, I'm landing this word, but let's engage with that for a second. Lord, thank you that there's the faith of God. And Bob Jones prophesied we will begin to be a generation that moved in the faith of God. Not our faith, your faith, believing what you believe. See, guys, this is the problem. We don't believe what Jesus believes. Let's start believing what Jesus believes. Okay, we're running out of time. But Paul prayed this in Ephesians 1.19, that we would know the exceeding greatness of his power, dunamis, towards us who believe, according to the working energia of his mighty power, kraktos. So in that one verse, Ephesians 1.19, he uses three words for energy. That's how much energy he had. The first one, dunamis, is force or breaking through power. He had breaking through power. The second is energia. In the New Testament, is superhuman energy to work. And the third energy he had is kratos. This is a cool one, guys. What's kratos energy? It is dominion energy from kingship. So he was moving in the breakthrough smashing power. He was working in the energy power to go the distance and rulership power. When we start to function in that bench of three in our consciousness, in our hearts, that we are kings, that we have limitless energy and we function in breakthrough power, we're going to be able to do what he did. Ephesians 3.20, he is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far above and beyond all we dare to ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts or dreams. How? That's the question. If there's a realm of power, where is the power for that? It says that energy is within us. We have to draw a line and stop preaching all creation. All creation is sin. All creation is death. All creation is separation. All creation is always in the future. The new creation is now the kingdom's here. Now we're in oneness. Now we're entangled like Nancy Cohen and Ian Clayton. And I've been with Ian Clayton where he's had no sleep. I mean, I was at a conference in Scotland with him and he got off the plane without sleeping. And he went to the conference and preached for days. I used to pick him up early at the hotel because he wasn't getting much sleep. He didn't need it. I need sleep. So he wanted me to pick him up at half seven and stuff like that. That's weird. That's strange. That's bizarre. But I tell you what, I remember opening the door of his hotel room and his eyes were a different color. And I could see light coming from him because he'd been in another world. And one of the things I used to do when I traveled a lot with Ian in the past, I would always say to him, what happened last night? Because God wants to redeem the night. Often he'd go up into the mountain of God as he fell asleep and he would be energized in the spirit, seeing the Maharishi of Kailash, seeing the saints, going into other dimensions we've never been to, to the edges of the universe. That's the new creation life. Ian's not a superhero. Nancy's not a superhero. We're all the same. We're Jesus's, wow, bride and family. We are one with him. Jesus has come and he lives in us. And that's why a lot of my meditations are, I'm in you. You're in me. We are one. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Now, why am I preaching such wild and crazy messages? I'm landing it now. It's because Paul preached this. Paul walked in so much glory that even when he was shipwrecked and he told everybody the storm was going to destroy the boat, he swam to the shore. What happened? He, he helped build a fire. So he wasn't tired after the storm. He wasn't tired after swimming. He swam on the shore. Whilst they're all soaking wet on Malta, he's building a fire. A snake bites his hand. A snake bites his hand. 
He flicks into the fire and the locals are expecting him to die. And he just carries on as if nothing happened. I just got bit by a venomous venom, venom the, the, the snake. He throws it into the fire. What happens then? He gets invited to pray. Oh, they think he's a god then. We have to get to the point where they think we're gods. That happened to Paul in Ephesus. They thought he was a god. It happened in Malta. They thought he was a god. Yes, we are sons of God. And we're going to start acting like God, sounding like God. Like Graham Cook says, when you're acting like God, you're being yourself. So he goes then and prays for the leader of Malta, heals him. And then what happens next? Paul heals everyone on the island. So he heals a whole nation. One Kynos believing, jacked up, ecstatic, who's out of his mind on the new wine, union with Jesus. One jacked up guy is so jacked up on Jesus that he not only... Whoa, heals the leader. He heals the whole island. Can you imagine healing a nation? Can you imagine healing a nation? Whew. So let me finish with this. So Paul caused riots because of the passionate gospel he preached. And we know the story. They stoned him in one story and they dragged his body out. The whole city stoned him. And they dragged him out. And it says the disciples stood around looking and the Lord Jesus himself took me back in time to watch this. And I can tell you now it was crazy when they dragged Paul out. He was so deformed by all the stoning. All of his limbs were out of joint. His face was smashed in. He was basically dead. They put him on the floor the, and walked back in the city. The reason that the disciples didn't do anything because he looked like roadkill. So I'm standing there looking at Paul. And I'm thinking, man, he looks terrible. <laughs> this is where it is in scripture. It says the crowds turned on Paul, stoned him and dragged him out of the city and left him there thinking he was dead as the disciples gathered round him. So I'm back in time watching this. And then it says this, Paul stood to his feet. You've got to think about this. I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. I watched it. I saw Paul's cheek reform. I saw all the cuts close. I saw his face reform. I saw his body reform. And he literally stood up and breathed. And he was perfectly whole. It says he went back into the city. So Paul walked back into the city where they just killed him. Now, this is the crazy thing. I want you guys to know this. Paul had the power of immortality. Jesus told me this. Paul debates in his letters, shall I give up my spirit or not? Shall I stay or shall I go? He says, it's better that I stay with you to keep going, so I'm going to stay. Do you know what? There are many saints that couldn't die until they gave up their spirit. Jesus couldn't die until he gave up his ghost. He, he said, no one can take my life from me. There's a time coming where that will be normal for every human being. There's a time coming where no one will die unless they give up their spirit. There's a time coming where immortality and life are going to swallow up the earth and this will be normal and people will have a new life and a new existence. So I'll end with this. End with this. Woo! Hope you guys are feeling this. This bit's been disorganized. Wow. All good. Just keep going. <laughs> so let's end with how did it end with Paul? God did powerful things through Paul, things quite out of the ordinary. The word got round and people started taking pieces of clothing, handkerchiefs and scarves and the like that had touched Paul's skin. Oh, my gosh, guys. They touched Paul's skin because when they were touching Paul's skin, they were touching Jesus because Paul lived in oneness and union with Hamashiach Adonai Aleph Tav. And he said, his life is my life. In him I live, in him I move. This is the gospel. No separation between you and Jesus. And there's going to be a generation that are going to come off the bewitchment of the charismatic move, mystic union, the age of the Holy Spirit, the age of union, the age of Melchizedek, the age of power and glory, the age of the unveiling that there can be so much life in us 
that it even touches the molecules around us and the molecules of the things you touch vibrate with so much life that they transmute the life within the person. There is a generation coming, rising upon the earth, who will walk from the realm of being in the Father and do greater works where, where the power of God is going to be displayed beyond anything we have ever imagined until the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. And I'm fighting for that future. And I'm giving my life for that future. And I don't care how controversial it sounds. I don't care how out of touch it is with the church. I don't, I'm, I'm serving Jesus. <laughs> I live for Jesus, not the church. I, I, I serve him. I have one master, Yeshua HaMashiach. And that is the gospel. So thank you, Yahweh. How are we going to walk in this? How are we going to walk in this? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. I am going to find out and you're going to find out and together we're going to find out. And Paul's in the cloud of witnesses. Jesus surrounds us and he's saying, who wants to learn living in the father? Because the Lord spoke to me and said this the other day, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. There's something I'm going into the father that's been reserved for this generation. There's something about living in the father, moving in the father, oneness with the father that is going to transform the earth. And he's inviting us into that. He's inviting us into the greatest adventure the world has ever seen. The greatest adventure called love, called life and immortality. yourself to be located in Christ What seemed so distant is now so near It's in Him that we are one At peace with everyone He made Thank you. 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 Thank you.